All right, it's time to round up a big story from the week, and the field of contenders for the White House is growing. Republican presidential hopefuls were in the early caucus state of Iowa for the inaugural Roast and Ride. The event is half motorcycle ride and half pork roast. Attendees include newly announced former Texas Governor Rick Perry, declared candidates Mike Huckabee, Ben Carson, Lindsey Graham, Carly Fiorina, and Marco Rubio also attended the event. Wisconsin Governor Scott Walker, who has not yet announced a run, was also there. And earlier this week, Hillary Clinton was in Houston to speak at Texas Southern University. While there, she called for a reform of the nation's voting system. The race to the White House is our topic this half hour. We want to hear from you. Weigh in on our Fox 26 Facebook page and on Twitter. Be sure to use the hashtag Fox 26 for life. Joining us live in the newsroom is our roundup panel led by our senior legal analyst Chris Tritico, news analyst Mustafa Tamiz, and public policy analyst Jackie Valley. I heard somebody say that the GOP race looks like a clown car right now. There's so many people in it. Does that hurt or help? Well, at some point, people are going to start saying this is this this looks like a caricature of, of, a, of a political race. But I think personally, regardless of what uh, party you affiliate with, the Republican uh, nominating I cannot talk today. The Republican primary season is going to be one of the most interesting races we'll ever get a chance to watch with this number of people in it. Now, with Rick Perry, Rick Perry's announcement this week, I truly think Rick Perry gets swallowed up in, in this race. I don't think he's going to have near the legs he started with last time before he imploded, and I don't think his campaign's really going to go anywhere. But that's not going to change what's going to be a very interesting race. Uh, uh, Hillary Clinton in this week, the same day that Rick Perry announced she's giving a speech at uh, Texas Southern University, and she took a shot right at Rick Perry, hit him right between the eyes, and chastised him for signing a bill, uh, a voting rights bill, not a voting rights bill, a voting bill in Texas that a, that a federal court r ruled in its ruling was designed to suppress voting. Uh, and that's going to be an issue, uh, Mustafa Tamiz, throughout this campaign, this voting rights issue, is it not? Well, it's going to be one of the issues, and, and if you look at that, uh, that, that litigation that's going back and forth, we, the Texas legislature and the governor signed a bill that allowed people to use an NRA card as valid identification uh, and at the same time, disallow a voter, I, a, a student registration card. So you go really, the, the, it is designed to prevent p people, uh, minorities and people of color from registering to vote. But I think that the, the Republican, getting back to the Republican primary, 19 people running, imagine this, how are you gonna do a debate with 19 people? You're gonna have to create like a bracket system where they'll have to fight against each other and the winners move up. Uh, it's a real challenge for the Republicans. I think that in, in one way people are saying that it creates some excitement in the party, but 19 people- But it is, is gonna, gonna be fun to watch. Stage. I mean, it's gonna be fun to watch this race. Oh, of course it is, and we have very good candidates and, and candidates of substance. In the meantime, of course, you have someone like Hillary Clinton who is, has an all-time high disapproval rating of 57%. Um, in 14 years, that's, that's the highest percentage of people who say they don't trust her because of all the things coming out with her foundation. They don't want her to be president. So, of course, she's going to spew this racial rhetoric that she was doing at the university the other day. When you have Rick Perry, was who was untrue? a very... Yes, it is. When you have Rick Perry, who is a very successful governor, um, he has a, a very successful record behind him uh, at a time when the rest of the nation was in an economic downturn. Our state did very well. When people were saying uh, with the oil, uh, with the downturn in the oil industry, people were looking at Texas and saying, okay, now let's see what happened. And he had built such a strong economic base, he and the Republican leadership did, that we had a diverse economy and we're still going strong. And that's what he's going to run on. The speech I saw, very well. Hillary's speech was only dealing with the voting law. That's right. what she took a shot right. at. And a court did say. And she made comments. And a court and did, she made hang comments. on, a court did say in its ruling that this law was specifically designed to suppress voting, didn't and it? And she made comments that the Republican Party was trying to suppress minorities. That is incorrect. That is racial rhetoric that she spews because she's at an all-time disapproval rating. All right, let me go to Sally. She's monitoring our social media. Okay, let's take a look at Twitter, see what people are tweeting about this morning regarding this topic. Tony says, I think conservatives are lucky to have so many choices. The libs only have one. Hillary, really? And then Kim says, wow, Governor Perry blew me away. His passion and endorsements are right on target with my views. I'm surprised but thrilled. She's all 
Perry 2016 there. And then this guy says, with Perry in the race, there are three viable 2016 contenders, Clinton, Bush, and I can't remember who the third one is, <laughs> referring to that cringeworthy moment a few years ago when Perry couldn't remember the third federal agency That's that he would one. eliminate. That's a pretty good one right there. I, I, do you think that, uh, uh, real quick, do you think that Rick Perry, like I do, Rick Perry gets swallowed up in this race? No, I don't. I think Rick Perry will be much better prepared. We all know that he was recovering from back surgery last time. He learned his lessons from last time. Uh, I think he will do much better than he did last time. His team is ready. As you heard from one of our viewers, he is very passionate, and I think he will do just fine. Reports are that he lost a great number of his major donors to Ted Cruz by waiting to announce as long as he did. I just don't know how he ever bust out. Well, in, in the past, you, ha you had to build a broad-based broad, broad coalition. You had to have a lot of people contribute to you. Now you just need one billionaire. I mean, you create a super PAC by having one person, and then that person basically creates a super PAC based on the issue that they care about. You don't even have to win. You don't even have to be competitive. The fact that you're on television talking about their issue is the cheapest way to change policies, to create a super PAC and find a presidential guy to you know, toot your, your message. But uh, there's one thing that I think uh, worth noticing right now. Although there are 19 people running and, and you know, people will fight to get to the right of each other, Ted Cruz, Rick Perry, and others, I think the person that wins out of this is Jeb Bush. Because the more people you have running, the less votes you need in order to win. I mean, does that make sense? Like the votes get divided up. And so the Jeb Bush creating a position where he's for Common Core and he is for uh, uh, you know, reform in, in the immigration system, he is unique in that. And so he's got 18 other people that are on the other side. And he's likely the beneficiary but of the large field. how does he win field. a Republican primary running to the middle already? Right now, Jeb Bush is looking, um, he has the highest numbers from name identification. So we'll have to see how this all plays out with his opponents in the primary, if they can actually raise their ID. But right now, his name ID alone, he is showing the largest percentage. And regardless of who the Republican candidate is, because we have very many good candidates with substance, uh, she will come out of this with so many liabilities because of all of the things coming out with the email scandal and the foundation scandals, and and whomever we have will beat her. Is so that it's true? Be great. Is that true? Well, I mean, Jackie's look, predicting a Republican victory. So, well, look, I mean, uh, Jackie's guessed? pointing out based on polling that she has high negatives, but also on the exact same polling, she beats every single of those 19 candidates today. So, on the one hand, we can point to the polls that she's got negatives. On the other hand, the same exact polls, every single one of them say that she beats all 19 of them. How That's bad did Jeb? That is true. That's that's How bad did Jeb Bush? This week, alone, hang on. this week alone, a new poll came out saying that's not true. How bad did Jeb Bush stumble over the war? I think we're going to see a lot of candidates stumble. The same way we saw her stumble and lie about her emails. The Good. same way we see her lie and stumble about how and they answer hired. my question about Jeb Bush. I just did. How I said did we will stumble? see all of the candidates stumble. The same way we've seen her stumble about the foundation. The same way we've seen her found, uh, stumble about the fact that and her foundation is more her party activists that are hired, and the people who are giving them all of this money, they should really look at where the money is going. Right. Because it's just nothing but a, a, a the, little right, we're almost out of place time. for her election. I think it's her work. husband's foundation. But did how bad did Jeb Bush stumble when he answered the question about the, the war George, with George Bush in Iraq? It, it, he had a tough week. I mean, he had a really bad week in and, and the, the news cycle. I just think that he's benefiting for all 18 other people that are running conservative, and he's the one that is for the Common Core, and he's for immigration reform. So as the, as the, as the kind of the, the extreme vote gets diluted, he may benefit from that. And wouldn't it be interesting to have a Republican nominee for the President of the United States that's for the Common Core and is for immigration reform? I think that's a good thing for the Republican Party.